Thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, I'm after Coach Loxley. Uh, press conference, we're going to go down to the second floor for the assistant coach availability. It'll be the five offensive assistants first for 30 minutes and then the five defensive assistant coaches. Um, followed by practice this afternoon. So we'll start with some of the remarks from Coach and then go from there. Yeah, I'll try not to bore you guys with too, too much opening remarks, but number one, I, again, I want to thank you guys for joining us here today and covering us. The job you guys have done, you know, I look out in the, the audience and I see some new faces, uh, you know, see some old faces, but some new faces. So you guys may have lost a couple in the transfer portal too, right? <laughs> kind of looks like it. But no, again, thanks, thanks to you guys for the job you do covering the Terps. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't congratulate both Coach Willard and uh, Coach Freeze, Brenda, uh, the job that they've done with their teams. And uh, being an avid basketball fan, it, it's great to be able to, to watch the job that, that both of those guys have done um, in tough situations. You know, Coach coming in, Coach Willard coming in late, uh, a, a new roster that he has to build up, very much similar to Brenda having to rebuild her roster and to see the job they've done uh, in March. Was, was tremendous for, for us to follow. So congrats to those guys. Um, as always, spring ball is, is, is something for us as coaches that we enjoy. Um, it's 15 opportunities to go out and develop our roster. Uh, we've got a lot of new faces. Uh, I think we had 18 new guys that showed up here in January, the end of January. Uh, first time in the Turk football family. And so for us, it's an introductory uh, to them as to how we do things Maryland football wise and uh, we get the opportunity to work hands on, develop the fundamentals uh, during this time of year. This is also kind of the time where we start to uh, figure out roles um, as we talk about roles change daily, but this is where you start to figure it out as a coaching staff as we implement our offense, our defense and our special team schemes. Uh, we also get an opportunity to look at the guys within those schemes to see who um, has continued to improve, but also to see what we've uh, been able to recruit. Um, it's great. It's a great start to create competition. Um, that's what spring's all about. For us to take the next step as a program, it's always about creating those competitive, uh, those competitive areas with each within each position, and, and we we feel like we'll be able to do that. We've got practice one today. Uh, we're on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday format where. We want to have a day in between each practice to make corrections, to watch film, to install. Uh, we weren't in a hurry, you know, to get spring ball done. Uh, we wanted to make sure we used the time prior to the start of spring. If you look at us, we lost a, a lot of a, a lot of uh, talent on the, in the trenches. And so, you know, Coach Davis and his staff has done a great job with the extra time that we got. It's about an extra week of being able to add mass size to the to our interior players and if you look at our team I've been really pleased with the job that coach Davis and his staff has done uh, during our uh, winter workout period um, excited about the new coaching staff as I've said here before uh, with the new landscape of college football we'll lose players we'll lose coaches uh, the University of Maryland football program is one that's a developmental program which means we bring in really talented players and coaches, and we try to develop them. Um, and we, we create value for our program because of the time that these people spend in our program. And I can tell you each player uh, that's left here, as well as each coach that left here, has left a, a, a strong foundation for us to build upon. And what I've tried to do with the addition of the new coaches, as you can see, is we brought in some experience. Uh, we brought in coaches that have been head coaches, uh, successful head coaches, won big games, been a part of big games. Uh, we've brought in coaches that uh, have received uh, major accolades for the job they've done at different places, and I feel really good about the addition of Josh Gaddis, uh, Jake Spavitzhall, uh, Latrell Scott, and Kevin Sullen joining our football program. And to be able to attract coaches of their caliber really shows what, what people think about the Maryland football brand as we continue to move it forward. Um, it's exciting times for the Terps. Um, you know, I heard something the other day about season tickets. I think within the first two days of season tickets, we sold over a thousand in two days, and we doubled the number of season tickets that we've sold compared to a year ago. And so, as I've sat here before and challenged our fans about uh, them and helping us build this brand, I want to thank them. Thank you guys for the job that you're doing to support and to support the vision that we have in terms of taking the next step with Maryland football. 
Uh, we've come a long way since December 18 when I took over. Uh, I think, as I've said before, the trajectory of our program is being uh, shown the way our players have performed the last two seasons. And I think, again, we still haven't scratched the surface of just how competitive we can be as a team. And I'm really looking forward to us taking an even bigger step this year, um, this spring, working with our players and coaches to put uh, us in the best position to have success in the fall. Um, and so with that, I guess I'll open it up to any questions. If you raise your hands, we'll get you a mic. We have orders on each side. Um, please state your name and affiliation, and we'll get your questions for Coach. We'll start with Dave Preston on the right. Mike, welcome back. What's up, Dave? Uh, now, last uh, season, Eight, you know, eight wins. You know, the uh, another bowl victory. Is was there anything that you could point to what you guys were able to accomplish in the spring that sparked that? That you look to recapture this spring. You know what? The thing about it is, we have to be very cautious about approaching it with building on what we were able to do a year ago. I'm a strong believer there is no building on last year. Uh, each team is its own entity, and when you lose players like some of the players we will be losing from last year's team, as I told our team yesterday, it's it's a restart. Um, now, what I do feel is that the culture is what will allow us for this restart to hopefully maintain some of the characteristics of the things that it takes to build a winning program, to build a championship program, and to me, uh, the locker room is where it starts, and so if there's anything that really jumps out to me, it's the locker room. And that's why I talked about the players we've left that have left a huge, huge imprint on the way we need to do things, the Turk way, the right way. I think the players in that locker room now see the dividends of when you do it the right way. And so to me, that gives us a great start uh, as we move into the version of the 23 Maryland football family. Hey, hey, Coach. What's up, Ed? Uh, um, going into uh, year five, obviously, you talked about just a lot of the new faces on both the coaching staff and then obviously some new faces on the roster that will need to step up. But having people like, you know, Talia, Jashawn Jones, and Ruth Pimple, like guys that kind of help lay the foundation along the way, um, I guess how important are they for you this spring? And I guess do you ask them to do anything differently to, to kind of help bring everyone else up to speed? Yeah, those veteran players that have been around here through our duration, I mean, as you said, this is year five, so we've had – uh, four years to get our first class, which if you look at it, I think it kind of got blown up. And now when you look at the way the landscape of college football is, seeing classes come through and, and where you lose maybe two or three is not the norm. But have those type of pieces, when you mention a guy like Talia, who seems like he's been around here a long, long time, has had great success uh, to have him back. If you've got a quarterback, you got a chance. And we, we feel we got a quarterback. Uh, to be able to keep Jay Sean Jones here, um, at least until the next portal window opens, because you never know what, the way the portal goes, but to have Jay Sean come back for an extra year, I think one, it speaks volumes to our program, because again, a guy like Jay Sean who's been through two knee injuries, have been through a lot, uh, to want to come back and still be a part of helping us take the next step is really, really important. You know, Ruben was one of those guys that jumped on board, you know, jumped with both feet in, didn't hesitate. He was a guy that was heavily recruited anywhere in the country, and he's been a, a stalwart in terms of the type of player we want to recruit to Maryland. And so having guys like that in our program uh, to be able to continue the tradition of what that locker room has become, you can't put a value on it. Right, yeah, uh, hi, hi, Coach. Uh, Giles Walker with the Baltimore Sun. Um, What's going on, Giles? Good to meet you. Yeah, you too. Um, you, you touched on this a little bit already, but you have a lot of talent. I mean, you had seven guys at the combine. You have a lot of talented guys working on the pro day tomorrow. Is you know watching that group walk out the door a test of kind of the trajectory of the program and the fundamental strength of the program? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, definitely a test of the program because those guys, that was a lot of football being having been played with those players. Uh, you look at guys like Spencer Anderson and Jalen Duncan, pretty much four-year starters around here. And, you know, you look at the corner position, and Deontay and bringing in Jacory, and so some really talented players leaving. But what I, I also do think is it shows the trajectory of what our program can be because a lot of those guys weren't the names you heard about on signing day when they came out of high school. And it's a testament to the type of program that we're, we're building here uh, with the development of our players where you can come here 
uh, you can be developed by great coaches, great facilities, uh, strong academics, and have an opportunity to live out your dream. So um, it's a testament to not just our football program, but the University of Maryland, our athletics department in general, that you can take the type of players you'll see participate in our pro day tomorrow that maybe didn't come in with the accolades that you read about every single day on re in recruiting, but to see how they finish. And I think that's really a, a huge compliment to our program. Good morning and happy football. Good afternoon. Hey, Wayne. Hey. When you get name brand coaches to come to Maryland. Name brand coaches. Name brand, right. well, some of these guys are well known. Okay. What's, do you have to make a sales pitch to them or how do you recruit them and how is that different than recruiting a player to come here? Well, I, I think anybody that knows me, Wayne, knows that um, I'm not trying to sell people to come to Maryland. I'm not trying to sell people to stay in Maryland. I've been a huge proponent of the transfer portal, coaches leaving, uh, the days of Maryland having to beg and, and sell for people to come. We're going to show you what we have, why it's important for you to understand the value or what value coming to Maryland will create for you. And to me, that, that's what we've done. Um, I think if anything, it's a testament to Maryland when guys like Kevin Sumner, like Josh Gaddis, uh, like Latrell Scott, want to come and be here. And so the days of us selling and you know some sales pitch for recruiting or bringing coaches here or to keep coaches or players, I'm just not going to do it. I mean, in this day and age, it's we've got a great product here at Maryland. Um, we've got great academics. We've got great facilities. We've got great people. Um, sure, we'll lose some good people, and we did. We lost some great coaches who laid a strong foundation and helped us get the program to where it is today, and I have nothing but respect for all those guys. We've lost some great players that have done the same thing, but you know what, we're welcoming some great players as well, as well as some great coaches. Uh, and see the studio times. Um, how you doing? So you mentioned the veteran players coming back and their importance, but how important is it for some of the early enrollees in the freshman class to get spring ball underway? Yeah, that's a huge, huge jump for those guys to get a jump on the competition. You know, what they have found, though, this is the toughest time in our program to, to be showing up here. Uh, our winter workouts are tough, they're grueling, they're strenuous, uh, they're challenging. And, and, and for each of these guys, I know the 17 or 18 guys it was that showed up here, uh, this has been a tough three months for them. But they've persevered, and now they get an opportunity to do what they really came here for, which is to play football. And so um, to get a jump start on next year, especially for the kids coming from high school or the transfers, uh, as I said before, uh, you can't put a value on, on just how valuable it, uh, it is for them to be here to go through uh, an installation of our systems, offensively, defensively, and special teams, uh, at least a one-time run an opportunity to work with our coaches from a fundamental standpoint uh, going in the summer and then you know having the opportunity to hit it again come summer camp so uh, definitely very valuable for those guys that are here early um, allows them to get a jump start on the competition to find a role within our program. Take two from the camera deck, David and Alex. Hi, Hi coach David Barnes from CTV News. What's up? Um, Thanks. Uh, you always talk about how this is a restart maybe especially so because you have a new offensive coordinator and with the offense, your two new receivers, Dante and Rockham, are working out for the NFL. What you saw from the running game, though, last year and, and coming on as strong as it did, how much more is that influencing maybe your approach to spring practice, change the turnover in receivers and the improvement in the running games and how you might approach this? You know, I'll start with the first part of it. You know, bringing Josh Gaddis in, um, it's not a new system. Um, we're running the Maryland offense, and that will remain consistent throughout my tenure here. As I've said before, what we do on offense, defense, and special teams won't change based on the coordinator. Uh, now, what the coordinator is able to do is to put his personality on it, call it to his personality, which will allow Josh to do that, um, and then bring in whatever new things that add value to those, to those systems. And so, you know, it's not necessarily a new system there. Um, as far as losing those receivers, you know, one of the best things we do around here, and I know it's some people don't see it or understand it, but we always talk about development. 
we've developed some really talented young receivers. You saw Octavian Smith have a big play in the bowl game. You've seen Ty Felton uh, play some great football here the last couple of years. I uh, was really impressed with the work Shalik Knotts did getting going into the bowl season, uh, having a Jay Sean Jones back, uh, the addition of Caden Prather, Tyrese Chambers. I mean, we will have receivers. This is an offense that is really a, a balanced system. Receivers, running backs, skill positions, tight ends. Uh, people know we will find ways to get you involved if you show the ability to be a playmaker for us. And so uh, the last piece of it is the running back room is probably one of the more talented ones. And a year ago, I'm not going to say I told you so, but I told you so. That that room, even though it was young, had shown the propensity of being very talented and to have Roman Hemby back, Antoine Littleton back, uh, Ramon Brown, as well as Kobe McDonald, and then you add in Nolan Ray coming in, who we signed out of Detroit. Um, we've got our hands full of trying to find opportunities for all these guys, and I expect us to be able to do it. Um, having done this before with this type of talent, I see us being able to spread the ball around, keep people on balance, and we do still have some firepower on offense. Hey, Lux, first off, how much mayonnaise have you had in the last three months? Have you given up on it? Uh, not a lot, not a lot. I can understand that. Um, you know, coming into this spring. Oh, I do love Duke's Mayo. Uh, <laughs> I like Duke's Mayo. That's a shout out to Duke's. They gave us the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Washington $10,000 for that. So I appreciate Duke's Mayo for that. All right. Um, you know, coming into this spring, um, you know, obviously a few years back we had all the COVID stuff, and, and now we have Talia coming into another year here obviously lost the off some of the offensive staff but good guys coming in brian williams is back uh you're coming off eight wins i mean have you ever felt maybe is this or do you feel more relaxed than you usually do coming into spring or, or do you feel like this you know I, I mean i guess compared to past years like how prepared or, or how good do you feel coming into this this spring practice i mean as a head coach you never feel good um for me, at least, I'm always looking as I, you know, our mantra is the best is ahead. So as the boat moves forward, the waves behind us have no bearing on us moving forward. And so it's really important that that's the mentality that we have as a program. And uh, each and every day should be like fourth and one with the ball at the minus 37 yard line and we've got to get a first down. And that's the approach. I mean, a sense of urgency, uh, no complacency, always trying to move and program forward. I mean, we still have not scratched the surface. I mean, in terms of what our football program can be and where we want it to go. Um, and I think our fans understand that. And our, and our fans have been great as I talked about the season tickets and where they've really bought in. Uh, we have a chance to do some really special things around here if we can get this NIL piece figured out because of the type of talent that comes out of this area. Uh, so no, no relaxing. If anything, we're a little bit more vested in continuing to take the next step. And this next one is the hardest. To go from seven wins, eight wins, to trying to compete for championships is a big task. And we're up for it as a program, and I hope our fans and the supporters that follow Maryland Athletics are up for it as well. Coach uh, Bruce Foster. Bruce, uh, what's up, Bruce? Great to see you again. Always a pleasure. You've got an air of confidence now about you. That's now? Did I not have it before? You've had it, but it's grown. All right. That's the great beard, wisdom. Maybe, maybe that's it. Uh, how are you satisfied with the growth of our collective and our NIL growth? How much time is that in, entailing your recruiting? And one quickie, uh, competition committee after this next year. Any decisions on that or any idea of what's going to happen when USC and UCLA come in? Um, so we'll start with the first part. Am I happy with our collective? I'm, I'm happy with the way uh, the, the foundation that was created to support football. The Best is Ahead Foundation, uh, Jeff Leventhal, Dan Crowley both running it, uh, being loosely affiliated with Maryland football. I'm really happy with the way that thing is built because it's built around the principles of you do something good to receive something. Um, we've talked about it. It's a community service based a foundation, a 501c3, where our players are able to benefit and, and, and 
and make money by going to do great things in, in our surrounding communities, Baltimore, DC, uh, this whole region. So really uh, like the way that it's set up. I can tell you that um, it still takes all of us. And I've always said that you know, it's easy to challenge us to go out and win games, but now the challenge is on our supporters and our fans that if you want to win championships, here's your opportunity to partner with us to do that. And so, um, you know, I, I like the direction it's headed. I'm still in its embryo stage, still kind of learning and feeling our way through with it. Um, as far as the second part of it. Competition uh, with the after next year, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had our head coaches meetings out in Chicago, obviously in a, a year from now. USC, UCLA joined our league, which is a great thing for our league. I think it makes us uh, the best league in the country, um, really competitive. Uh, still a lot of things to be worked out with that as well. And so, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn in terms of the direction of how things look moving forward, but I can tell you that uh, I'm excited about the direction of the Big Ten and with the addition of those two teams and how things are moving forward. Mike, so Leah's coming back for a fourth year. What does it mean to be able to develop a kid for four years within an offense? And what does that mean, you know, I guess residually for the offense to have a guy who's that experienced in the offense? Too? It's, it's a little unheard of in college athletics to see a, a four-year starter, a guy that's had an opportunity to start four seasons in the same system, the same offense. And as with every part of our program, I would think you're going to continue to see him get better and better uh, as we've seen him do each year here. And, and this is a huge year for him. He's a guy that I know has aspirations to play at the next level. Um, haven't seen a bunch of guys that have gone on to do that. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that he has the ability to do it. Um, quarterbacks are judged by winning. And if you look at the impact that Talia Tungavailo has had on our program uh, since he's been here and, and how, what we've been able to accomplish, shows that he is a winner. Um, excited because of that experience, excited because, uh, like I said before, one of the best quarterbacks in the country having a chance to come back and then still have some really talented players around him uh, for him to distribute the ball to. So um, it's a win-win for us having to lead back and with his experience, as well as having the type of players that we've been able to recruit for our system on that side of the ball that I think will it's one of the attractions that bring guys like Kevin Sullivan and Josh Gaddis here. There's a few more. Hey, Coach. Ben Sherbert, WNBC Sports. Ben, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, so you had to ask a lot of uh, some of your young receivers last year, especially towards the end of the season, that bowl game, Ty Felton, Shalik Knotts, Octavian Smith, who caught the only touchdown in that bowl game. I mean, what do you think it meant to those guys for their development to play in some of the games like that, really big games? just make plays for you guys down the stretch. And what do you expect from them moving forward in the next season? Yeah, I think the big thing is, is, you know, anybody that's been around here through how we prepare for bowl games, understand that you're going to see a bunch of new faces. And that's why we kind of say that the bowl game is really the start of the next season for us. And so, you know, it's great to see Octavian make that play in the bowl game. And it was a huge catch and a huge momentum play for us. But he's also a guy that played a, quite a few snaps throughout the course of the year. But I think Punch Knotts is going to be one of the better receivers to ever play here based on the size, the talent, and his skill set. You know, Ty felt, you know, he's not a young guy anymore. Ty played a lot as a true freshman, played even more a year ago, and I expect him to kind of take that role on that as being one of our go-to guys along with Jay Sean Jones. And so, you know, as I've said before, receivers in this system usually have great success because of the type of system we run, because of the type of quarterback we have. Uh, so really excited to see how these guys continue to develop, but there's no doubt they're talented as much as any of the other receivers we've had to come through here. Last two, Kevin in the back. Hey, Coach, good to see you again. Kevin, what's up? Good. Uh, you mentioned at the end of the regular season, the 2023 season was starting when the bowl, you were getting ready for the bowl game. What's been your evaluation, your overall evaluation of what you've been able to accomplish over the past three months since we last talked to you? And what questions do you still need answered during spring ball? Um, I'd say my overall evaluation is that with the addition of the new coaches that we brought in, um, there's a lot of experience. And you know we had some talented young coaches and guys that are, were in their first time opportunities of being coaches like Elijah Brooks, like Mike Miller, 
who hadn't necessarily been full-time coaches. Well, now to be able to replace them, especially with the job they did with the foundation and the energy that they bring, but to be able to bring in guys that have a lot of skin in the game in terms of big game, having to prepare for big games. You know, when you look at what took place in last season for us, Michigan, Ohio State, even Purdue, where those were some opportunities where you know, play here, play there is a different ball game. Um, adding the type of coaches I've been able to add with the experience Latrell Scott brings and J Jake Spavadol brings, uh, that's been really, really something that I, I focused on throughout the hiring process to, to get a little more experience at the coaching staff, which hopefully will enable us to find ways to take that next step and win those games that we didn't win this year. Um, as far as the continued need, I mean, we're always working and continuing to try to improve our roster, improve our program, improve our, improve our support staff, uh, improve our schemes. And so, you know, when I talk about us being a developmental program, that's just what I talk about that. Uh, we're always evolving, always trying to find ways to get better. So uh, still have a lot of a lot of ways to get better as a program and really looking forward to trying to um, get it figured out how to take this next big step. Hey, Coach. Um, you kind of talked about Kate and, and Tyrese Chambers earlier. And just to, to kind of have, you know, some local talent to kind of replenish the room that it also featured some local receivers. But then just as a whole, you know, the transit portal, a lot of the additions, you know, like uh, Corey Bowler, Gala Bianzi, like all these guys played locally, went to another school and get a chance to kind of close out their career. So uh, one, obviously being able to, to fill your needs through the transit portal. But how do you feel like that kind of went this year? And then two, to do it with the local talent. Um, does that add anything special for you? It's always great when you bring local players back home. Um, you know, for me, you know, I've, I've got a little rule of thumb in recruiting that a lot of the local players understand that if you're a guy that allows us to recruit you the right way, where you take official visits, you come and give us the respect of being the flagship university, the hometown team, and you choose to go somewhere else, you know what, I'm okay with that. And if things don't work out, we'd consider bringing you back. But if you were a guy that didn't give us the time of day that maybe kind of we weren't good enough for you and you go away and things don't work out, it'd be pretty tough for me to want to wanna bring you back and be a part of it. It goes back to me not trying to sell people to be here and want to be here. So guys like Tyrese Chambers, guys like Caden Prather, those guys wanted to be here. You know, they had opportunities elsewhere. They decided that maybe they could create more value for themselves here. Um, and we welcome those guys. Corey Bullock comes here with a chip on the shoulder. Uh, Three-year, four-year starter down there at North Carolina Central had great success. So I love seeing some of these local guys that have gone away, maybe found that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, to know that they can come home and be a part of a program that is uh, on the right trajectory and help us continue to build this thing to a championship level. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.